The Peña Francia is a home. That's why the word ina is a word of endearment that finds home in the hearts of people. That home is a mother, and that mother is the mother of God. Like a mother, she takes care of her children, all of us. And like children, we love her as a mother. Peña Francia devotion is the local face of Mary to the Bicolanos, which they can touch, they can feel, they can sing about. So during vulnerabilities, they would want to find anchor in a home, not only the physical home, but the spiritual home. It sinks deeply in their hearts, and therefore it is a devotion that connects with the people. For a fuller understanding of the Peña Francia devotion is intertwined with the culture of the people, 
how they celebrate things, what is their mind frame, and what is its implication in their life. For the Bicolanos, Peña Francia is what we breathe, what we eat. Because even in our elementary and high school days, I remember that was part of the animal routine of life. And it is a story that is shared by everybody. And so it's part of our system. six provinces with a specific language but the unifying I believe is the Peña Francia devotion and uh, from a religious perspective I think it's the only regional fiesta celebrated by six provinces. When it comes to Peña Francia here in Bicol there's no politics here. They always emphasize you forget everything here. You are just a devotee of Our Lady. No politics, nationality, no color, no rich or poor. Nothing. You will see very rich people in that procession, walking with the ordinary workers. A memory of the devotion is passed on from generation to generation. Because we have imbibed the personal religious practices, testimonies, in the family. For instance, in our family, there was a time that there were about eight imperial priests. And so, in Bicol, a priest would always have another priest relative. From a historical educational perspective, the seminary played a role, especially at the end of the Spanish time. I believe it was only in Bicol wherein the revolution did not take an anti-clerical Island. Because the priests played a very crucial role, a unifying leadership role, and most of the elite were products of the seminary.
our it all started way back in 1434, somewhere in Castañar, Spain. There was a man who entered the monastery where he was your brother or some kind of a helper by the name of Simon. And he was hearing inspirations or sounds telling him that he should look for the image of Peña Francia. Not knowing where Peña Francia was, he went to France, was looking for the image there. There was no Peña Francia there and they did not know where it was. So he went shopping, two ladies somewhat quarreling about charcoal. One was saying, my charcoal is better than your charcoal because it comes from Peña Francia. So he heard the name Peña Francia and he followed the woman. And he finally explained that uh, she was looking for Peña Francia. And so he found a mountain, rocky mountain. Why was it called Peña Francia? Because during the fight between the French soldiers and the Moors, the French soldiers took their stand in that place. 200 years past where they were fighting the Moors. And maybe that was the time when they were destroying churches and people were burying their images. So it was then he found this cave. It seems that there was something in that cave and so he decided to dig. And so he went out to look for some helpers and he found five men, five men who were all had defects, some defects in their bodies. And I have the record, oh. this is official deposition of five people that attest that upon touching, kissing, and embracing the image, they were instantly cured. So these were the five men, the first ones to touch that image. And so it spread in Spain. Now, we'll go to the Philippines. How did it come to the Philippines? Now, this was something in 1710 that a family by the name of De Cubarubias came to the Philippines. And they had a son by the name of Miguel who wanted to be a priest. So he entered, he wanted to enter the seminary. So what he did was he had a, a picture of Our Lady. Wherever he felt pain, he would put that picture on the pain and it would be cured. And so she, he made a promise. Our Lady, if I get well and become a priest, I'm going to spread your devotion here in the Philippines. So make a long story short, he was nearly becoming a priest. And he was planning to start the devotion in Pasi. But at that time, the bishop here in Naga called him, Bishop Gonzalez, said, you become a priest here now. I'm going to ordain you here. I need someone to help me. And he came over and was ordained here. At about the same time, the 
the Cimarrones called the Mountain People because they did not register to the Spaniards, asking the bishop for someone to evangelize them, tell them about Christianity. And so the bishop asked Father Miguel to go and uh, evangelize the people. Then it came to a time when they were going to build a Nipa and Bamboo little chapel by the river. When they had a chapel, they had no image. So he remembered that stampita that he had. They made an image, wooden image of Our Lady. The time came when they were going to paint it. So they killed the dog, tied the dog and killed it. That the priest said, may Our Lady show mercy to this dog, gave his life for her. Our usual habit of throwing dead animals into the river, all tied, this was seen and documented by many. That started swimming back to the house of the owner. So in Spain started with five men, here it started with a dog. And that was the time when the devotion started. Huh? Started answered prayers, they got miracles and all that. Huh? witnesses to different festivals throughout the country. But the Peña Francia as a religious, cultural celebration really runs deeper because it touches on the element of faith. Though it has connectivity as a value, it has vulnerabilities. So the Virgin is a healing virgin. So during times of vulnerability, they would run to the Peña Francia. It's more intense. No? But again, it is open to fanaticism, superstition, and it can even be, as you may have observed, highly sentimental. When a person is at the point of vulnerability, sickness, big problems, no? hope is the last line of defense. It is only hope that gives meaning, dimension to all even sufferings and pains. And hope itself can already be a grace of God. And the moving forward element should be there, how it transforms and changes our lives. And that is why the promesa, commitment, every year they would come here, it is a, an echo of their personal experience. The crowds began bigger and bigger, and so they decided to bring it to the bigger church, the cathedral. And that is why we have the translation, to transfer the image of the Peña Francia to the cathedral to begin the novena and bring her back by the river and that's the fluvial procession. The Peña Francia is also a pilgrim region. Many Bicolanos who are uprooted 
either in foreign lands, etc., they would want to recall memories of the Peña Francia. And therefore, the Peña Francia gives them a sense of identity, a sense of meaning and purpose, so that they make it a point to really celebrate even outside Bicol or even in foreign countries. Every Saturday afternoon, we have a healing mass. After the healing mass, we have the procession. After the procession, we have a healing prayer for everyone, where we use the mantle of Our Lady to cover them as we pray for them. And we have many answered prayers already. Actually, there are several answered prayers, especially during the when my uh, my mother has a cancer in uh, breast cancer. Then he. Uh, I invite her to to go in Naga, and he always visit the blessed the, the blessed mother mm -hmm. in Daina. Uh, actually, her life has had been extended, mga five years. So, sabi ko kay sa mother ko, yun uh, mag visit ka parate. So at least extend yung ano niya for for another five years. Yeah, definitely there is a, a pronounced uh, change. Yung mga young people are, uh, sabihin na natin, they need a lot of deepening. Kasi iba naman yung experience of the older generation. So young people, they have their priorities, they have their own set of meanings, they have their own way of doing things, way of no. thinking. But still the Peña Francia is there. So the challenge is how to ingrain a much deeper understanding. Before, the uh, procession was not as unruly as it is now. Before, kasi the translation and the fluvial are the two focal points of the devotion. And if one would look at it from a meaning dimension, the translation is the road procession and it is characterized by pushing and every... And I look at it as the dynamics of the today's world, where it's, it is a survival world. And then, when it goes into the river, you know, it is more serene, it's not a peaceful journey, but a safe arrival. And it is a coming home in the Basilica of Our Lady of Our Ina, who is the mother for all times.